welcome back to Driver Career F2 to F1 World Drivers Champion. The driver career that's not exactly in driver career at the moment because it's in Grand Prix mode because my driver career save broke. Because I've been having issues with this game. But all issues aside, we can move on to the penultimate weekend of the, of the F2 season. We are under the lights at the Jeddah Cornish circuit for the Saudi Arabia weekend here in Formula 2. Sprint race and feature race. The third, the fourth and third last races of the season. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I am thinking that right. Uh, no rain expected, thankfully. Well, to be honest, you'd expect that in Saudi Arabia. Um, but either way, we're going to get qualifying underway under the lights of Saudi Arabia. DRS opening up. As we're on the main three, I really like this circuit. And um, for, I think, the first time in quite a few races, we're going to attract that I've actually done quite a bit so far on this game. Okay, I say quite a bit. I drove it, I've driven it in my, it's a track I've done in my team, word it that way. Which of course, um, if you saw my video from like yesterday, I think it was, with my small my team update, my team will be returning Tuesday next week is what I'm aiming for. So the 23rd of August, that's what I'm aiming for. For, my net, for the next episode of my team. Just an FYI. Sh issues are sorted. Situations under control. And we've gone purple in the first sector. Although the first sector is arguably my strongest sector on this track. And it's also a sector I really, really, really love. Like my, my, I, just, I love it. As Nasani said at the early pace of the session. But I expect the times will get rather quicker than that. As we go a little bit white for the apex. And there we go. Daruvel has already gone quicker than him. Uh, but the times are going to tumble, and we're going to see where we can place ourselves on the timing towers. We're in the middle sector, DRS opening for the second DRS straight. And um, we'll see the sector split as to where we are to Daruvula. Um, we are the, the, the three and a half tenths down on Drogovic now, who slot himself into second place. As we're onto the back curve now, opening up DRS now for the final time. I'll say final time. Penultimate time on this lap. Of course, we will be opening up DRS again on the main straight. But you know what I mean... You know what I mean with the DRS into the final corner. Bit of a, so that's a corner that's a lot easier in F1 cars. I, I found that corner a bit more cumbersome in F2 cars. There's a bit more understeer creeping in with the F2 car than normally I have in F1. As we go P4, two times behind Zendeli, Guan Yu Zhou is quickest at the moment. Um, we're down in P17, uh, P18 now, as we're going to head on to our final lap of the session. This is probably the most cars I've ever seen out at the very end of the session. Normally there's still quite a few cars still in the pit lane, but now there's only two. The guys who are first and second, which I think is Joe and Boshong. Um, but either way, we're gonna get this lap going and see if we can, how much time we can gain, see if we can get a better run through the first sector. But mind you, my run through the first sector was very good on my first lap and it's quite good now. I say quite good. We are up minorly. We are up by a tenth of a second as uh, we have a little top of the wall there. And uh, still a good first sector. Still a good first sector. Better than we went the first time. And we go purple once again as the checker flag falls. We go into the slightly banked turn 13. Uh, it's now or never as the will Of course it'll be now or never for the lap because qualifying is over. We just have this lap and then that is it to decide our good position for the feature race and the sprint race. Um, as we get a decent exit out of there, a better exit than we had on our first lap. We were not tight away from the tight away from the apex. We were closer to the damn apex. That's what I'm trying to say. We'll see the second sector split right about now. We're half a second up on Drogovic. We go deep at 22. That's going to hurt us all the way through to the final corner. We were deep at 22. We've lost about four tenths there. Well, I said four tenths, like three tenths or something like that. We've lost. In that one corner, that one chicane corner type thing, 22 and 23. We're going deep there, final corner, a little bit away from the apex. As I said, but I've always found a bit more understeer at that corner than I normally would in an F1 car. As well as the F2 cars being the F2 cars, we're going to cross the line, and I believe it's only P14 is all we manage. Joe Guan Yu does take pole position. <sighs> Pardon me. From Ralph Balshong, Jack Aitken and Dan Tictum are on the second row of the grid and Tictum's got his teammate Jehan Druvel right behind him alongside Samayas. Zendeli and Salto are 7th and 8th, 9th and 10th. 
will be Ben Vizcala, Marcus Armstrong, who will be on reverse grid pole. Our teammate disappoints in qualifying for him, dying in P18. I don't know what's happened to Piastri. I really don't know. But as I said, Marcus Armstrong, speaking of that general neck, I say that general neck of the word. Speaking of Marcus Armstrong, he's on pole for the sprint race. Ben Vizcala, Marino Sato, and, and uh, Zendeli Samaya make up the top five. Drew Latik to make Ken Bosch on Joe will round out your top ten. Uh, let's head to the grid and see what we can do from P14 on the grid. Hello and welcome to the Jetta Street circuit, where the excitement is building for what I'm sure will be an exciting Formula 2 race here in Saudi Arabia. So let's examine the Jetta Street circuit. As you can see, this has the potential to be a very challenging track for our young F2 drivers. We'll get a good chance to see which of them have been able to best capitalize on their time spent here in practice earlier this weekend. And like the other street circuits on the calendar, the lack of runoff is going to make sections of this track very punishing if the drivers get it wrong. Let's hope we avoid having to bring out the safety car this time around. As we await the start of another hugely anticipated Formula 2 race, I'm joined again by Davide Valsecchi. Davide, as a former GP2 champion, can we get some insight to what is running through these young drivers' heads as they sit out on the grid? Ciao, Alex. It's a pleasure to be here. They are nervy moments. There is no doubts about that. Mental strength is the key to remaining calm and focusing on the upcoming race. Formula 2 is so competitive and all of these drivers know that they are going to be pushing each other all of the way. In these sports, you have to be able to control your nerves. So, they're not saying anything as we're going to be heading on looking at strategy. It's saying medium tires for the whole thing and to be honest, I'll stick to that because again, I need the soft tires. For, I need the one fresh set of softs for the feature race. Um, everybody's on the medium tires. I swear, I wish they would give you a second set of soft tires so you could choose whether you want to start on softs or like a two sets of a softer compound is what I'm meaning to say. So the, if you want to do the whole, if it's a completely dry weekend, you, if you want to do the, the sprint race on the softer compound and still have another fresh set of, salt of the softer compound for the feature race, then you would. You know, if you know what I mean? Yep, cheers for that one, Jeff. Absolutely vital information from you, as always, as we're just waiting to line back up into our grid slot here on the racetrack. It's getting the last bit of heat into our tires, weaving around a little bit as we're all going to park up. Let's see if I can not fuck up the parking job like I did in Singapore. And um, as we also wait for Liam Lawson to get out of our fucking grid slot as we nail the parking. parking there, mate. Let's make sure we get the edge on the surrounding drivers as the lights go out. Yep, cheers, mate. I'm the very appreciative of that. We got a brilliant parking job. But parking aside, the lights are what we need to focus on now. They're on ahead of us, and when they go out, we're going to be racing. They're out right now, and we are racing in Jeddah for the sprint race. It's actually a half decent start from us, but it's a brilliant start for David Beckman there. Holy shit, the cap ball's going right in there. They make a bit of contact with Joe. We lose our front wing. That is counterproductive there. A turn one already getting damaged. I'd expect nothing less from F2 in Jeddah, to be fairly honest. It's carnage here. Carnage. I'm telling you that much. It's into the. Fourth corner, we get more damage to our front wing. I say fourth corner, A corner. Yellow flags are flown as we're all just trying to get going again. Our teammate is right there trying to get places, make more contact with for sure there. As we have damage to both sides of the front wing. There's a massive scrap happening just ahead of us. As uh, Piastri's gotten ahead of, I believe that's Drogovic. Fittipaldi just ahead of Nassani, Deled, and for sure then ourselves. As um, we head on here on the first lap with wing damage, Check choosing it, against going for a move. And uh, we are going to be pitting in at the end of it. We are going to be pitting in. And I am going to go into the soft compound tires. Might this screw me over for the feature race? Yes. Is it the risk I'm willing to take? Also, yes. I don't want to go on to another set of the mediums. Um, because again, I also might need them for the feature race. I'd rather and just. It looks like the pit crew are out and ready to perform their magic on the car. They will be aiming to achieve the fastest pit time possible. Mate, that's not going to happen. We have wing damage, but it's Marcus Armstrong leading the way then from Ben Vizcal, Larim Zendeli, Marino Sato, and Jehan Druvla is your top five. Samaya is in sixth bed. Take to Maitkin 
the final point scorer as we finally get back underway. Time, then. The team will be hoping they can get back into the action as fast as possible and not lose too much time from this stop. Well, not estimated life of the soft tires, nine laps. It's a good thing we only have nine laps remaining in this Grand Prix. We'll be doing one more stop today. One stop left in our strategy. No, we fucking won't, Jeff. Shut up. Honestly, I uh, Jeff sometimes it gets me. This agent sometimes is just a bit of an idiot, but I still prefer him to Elvis. I'm gonna be perfectly honest. I like Elvis, but I just I've gotten too used to Jeff. Okay, so I just I prefer Jeff. It's a personal preference, which is why I have the revived Jeff mod in, which is linked below. By the way, I've finally gotten around to putting that in the descriptions of videos it's in. It, the, the revived Jeff mod for those of you on PC who are interested in reviving Jeff will be linked below. Um, but anyway, our race is pretty much fucked. I'm just going for a fastest lap here for shits and giggles just to see what can happen. However, last time in Singapore we did the fastest lap but didn't get the point, but the points for fastest lap still went to someone inside the top 10 when that doesn't happen in real life. But you only get the points for fast, the points will only be awarded for fastest lap if you are inside the top 10 and have the fastest lap of the race. The person who got the point for fastest lap, I think it was Dan Tictum, I think? He got the point for fastest lap, I think. Or it was Tictum or Sato or something like that. It was a driver who finished second, I know that much. They got the point for fastest lap when they didn't have the fastest lap of the race, I don't think. We had the fastest lap of the race. It, I don't know, it's a little bit confusing. I really don't understand it, other than I think that it's a little bit of a bug. We'll see for definite at the end of this race, because I'm pretty confident I'm going to get the fastest lap, because we've got purple through the first two sectors. And we had 11.4 coming out of the middle sector. 1 minute 11.4. We'll see what this whole lap round out to. Our quickest lap at the moment is a 2 minute 1. Uh, so just an absolutely blistering lap from us for our quickest lap of this session so far. Uh, but we're going to see where this lap puts us in terms of timing. To be honest, our race is pretty much run and done. This is a bit of a just forget it race. Just an absolute just chuck it in the bin. As Jeff, we're not approaching the we're not approaching the pit window. We do go for a 43.399. It's a one one thousand thunder at 434. Uh, the yellow flags up ahead. Someone's having issues. Someone's um, having issues with the ever reliably unreliable Formula Two car. Lord and me. And I think it's Enzo Fittipaldi. He just dropped down quite a bit, um, dropping back, and he is out of the Grand Prix, out of the sprint race is the Brazilian driver who's yet to score points. He's the only driver who hasn't scored points yet in this series. Um, I can tell you what, if a car was parked up there in real life, I'm pretty sure that would be a virtual safety car at the very least. As Marcus Armstrong has taken the win. We've closed to within 12 seconds of Delida. Um, but it doesn't forget it race. This race, it didn't happen. What race? I, I don't know what you're talking to. What race? What? Yeah, 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 Jeff. What Saudi Arabia sprint race? I, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what Saudi Arabia sprint race you're talking about. It, it didn't happen. There, 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 there was no sprint race in Saudi. I don't know what you're talking about. Brilliant stuff from Dams today. What a superb victory. Davide, what do you think made the difference here? This race, this win, was about one thing and one thing only. Consistency. Anyone can be quick for just one lap. But there's a difference between that and being quick every lap, over and over and over. If you can do that, if you can gain ground when your opponents make mistakes, but then not make mistakes on your own, you can just push and push. And I can see our drivers making their way out now. It's been a sublime team performance, and it's the culmination of a lot of hard work. Dams are your winners today. Then Marcus Armstrong taking the win then as I said and see what I mean 
Don Tickton Fox, I'm sorry, Don Tickton Fawcett Slop, he got the two points for it. The fastest slap of the race was set by someone outside of the top 10. Dante should not have got those points, because that was not the fastest slap of the race. Cody's, what the hell is that? Uh, you'll see when we go down, we had a quicker lap time. Why did Dan take them get the fucking points for it? I don't know. Complaints aside, um, there goes the sprint race. Um, feature race next. Hopefully it'll go a little bit better. However, we're gonna have to see with the tire situation. We do have that set of stops from qualifying that we can probably that we'll probably be starting the race on. Uh, but we'll just have to see how everything works itself out with the sprint, with the feature race and the strategy. Ideally, we're gonna maybe start on mediums, but we'll see what happens as we head to the grid for the feature race. Greetings and welcome to Jeddah for what promises to be a thrilling Formula Two race. So an interesting circuit, Jeddah. Like some other street circuits in the Formula 2 calendar, it's likely to present a formidable technical challenge with a number of challenging turns for our young drivers to master. Plus, it's a hot track, and that high temperature has some big implications for tyre performance that they'll need to keep in mind in order to secure a good result. As we're now moments away from the off, let's take a look at the grid order in which they'll start today's race. A fantastic effort from Guan Yu Zhou yesterday puts him on pole position. Ralph Boshong lines up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Aitken, Tictum, Jan Daruvala, and Samaya, Zendeli, Sato, Viscal, Marcus Armstrong, Lungard, Lawson, Yuri Vips, and Schwartzman, Beckman, Porcher. Dragovic and Oscar Piastri. Nissani, Fittipaldi, Deleda, and Richard Vashore completes the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. Okay, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. Cheers, Jeff. Nice to hear from you again. So, as I've said, might be in a little bit of a more tricky situation with strategy and tyres. Um, it's going to be soft tires to start, then going on to the mediums for the second stint as um, we're going to get underway for the formation lab. We've got the two high techs ahead of us still, but it's uh, Joe Guan Yu on pole position for this one. He's not in P10. P10 is Marcus Armstrong, who was once in the championship fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers, mate. But he kind of just... I fell back a little bit when I went on that bit. I went on, to be honest, I went on a little bit of a tear during the European season. I'm going to be perfectly honest on that one. Uh, but either way, let's move on. And we move on with the formation lap. Trying to get our tires and brakes all up the temperature here. I should hope there's going to be no rain, Jeff. We're in Saudi fucking Arabia. We're in Saudi Arabia, Jeff. I should hope it's not good. Okay, I say I hope it shouldn't rain. But on the last game, as we make a bit of contact with Yuri Vips there, he brake checked us in the middle of the thing. Uh, are you kidding? Are you kidding? We're out of the formation lap. Okay, so not an ideal parking spot, but let's try and get a good launch upon the... What do you mean not an ideal starting position? What do you mean not an ideal parking position? I had no choice but to park it there. I mean, I didn't park it there, Elvis, okay? I did not do that fucking parking job. That was the game. And Yuri Vips, who fucking brake checked me. Right? I did not fucking park there, you fucking idiot. What do you mean, poor, not a great park? Of course it's not a great parking position for fuck's sake. But anyway... As we see Liam Lawson ahead of us, just pulling into his grid slot, and Potato Porcher behind us. We're just waiting for everybody to form up Porcher in his grid slot. And now, as um, we move on to the five lights ahead of us for the sprint race, we've got a shit parking job. Our tires are cold and we're underway. We are racing in Saudi Arabia. It's a little bit more of a shaky start for us. Um, but no one behind us has gotten a brilliant start as we dive into turn one, trying to just be cautious is the order of the day, I think, on this. Um, as we managed to gain a couple places, we managed to get Lawson and someone else off the start. We're open to P12 now, as there's a couple people side by side. Lungard and Armstrong side by side, as are Zendeli and Sato. As we've gotten through with no damage yet. Yet, keyword. 
Um, and that we're going horribly wide thanks to them battling ahead of us. We've got lots on our inside, but we make no contact. We get away. It's issue three. We get away scot free after the first lap. You can see our tire wedge there. That's head 25%. It's down towards turn 13. We're going to look to move on Ben Descal down the inside of the, I think, Dutchman uh, to get up into P11 on the exit, holding the position as we can now set off after Marcus Armstrong. The computer is making noises in my ears as um, we continue onwards on this opening lap. No fouls, no issues, no damage this time around. We're already off to a much better start than we had in the sprint race. Or rather, no, what sprint race? Uh, the sprint race that the man in front of us won. Ironically enough, Marcus Armstrong actually won an F2 sprint race in... Marcus Armstrong actually won one of the sprint races in Saudi Arabia last year in F2. And then it was Oscar Piastri who won the other one, and the feature race, which got called early due to a horrible crash on the main straight with involving Fittipaldi and Porcher, I believe, is towards the final corner. We're going to go down the race winner in this feature race, almost being contact with Lunger. I mean, sprint race, you know what I mean. Uh, we couldn't quite get the move finished, so we're going to try and finish it off with drag race. Well, we'll be a drag race down the main straight. As um, Joe when you said it's the fastest lap of the race, we're apparently approaching the pit window. I really don't care, Jeff. As into turn one, Viscal's gonna go for Armstrong. He's gonna look at the inside of us as well, but he's not gonna get it done. We're gonna hold on to the position, and we are up into the points paying positions of P10 on lap number two here. And we're now closing up to the back of Christian Lungard. We set a purple first sector of this Grand Prix. Not close enough to go for it into turn 13, but we look around the outside of the day, of the day and I nearly said Dutchman. My mind said Dutchman, and I was like, no, he's, a, he's Danish. He's a Danish driver who's uh, in IndyCar now. And he just signed a uh, signed a contract extension, I believe, with um, Rahal Lerman Lanigan Racing. Good for him. He seems, he seems to have found a home over in IndyCar, as does Callum Eilat. I would like to see Eilat in Formula One, but I mean, he's signed on a, multi a longer term deal with um, Junkos Hollinger. As we see Lungard going for Zendel, he doesn't quite work out. Can we get involved here? Yellow flags are flying. Someone's having issues where maybe just might get the move done on the exit as someone behind us is having some issues. Um, I, I think it could be a campus, maybe. I don't know. All I know is that we're in ninth place at this present moment in time as we wait and see who's retired. It's David Beckman. It is a campus. He's out of the Grand Prix. Um, the first victim is a virtual safety car has now been deployed. Due to an incident with multiple vehicles being stopped on the track. Yeah, yeah, Jeff, I'm, we're, we're fine, it's fine. No problems at all, Jeff. I've got this sorted. I know it's a virtual safety car. Watch the car not be cleared when the virtual safety car comes in. That'll be the next thing. That's a classic on this game. They call the virtual safety car for car stops on track. But then the cars aren't cleared by the time the virtual safety car ends. They're still on the fucking racetrack. I've seen that many times. Many, 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 many times as the virtual safety car is going to end. Yep, we floored it and hoping this works out. The car is still on the damn racetrack. I told you. I told you the car would still be on the damn racetrack. We're right in the back of Zendeli at this point in time for 8th place. But we are going to be pitting at the end of this lap to get off these soft compound tires. We're already pretty worn at the start of the Grand Prix. Um, but still, we're going to look for the move. On the German driver, I think he's German. It was a bit of a, a argy bargy kind of move, but we're up in eighth place at the moment with the fastest lap of the Grand Prix as well to boot. And now it's going to be into the pit lane at the end of this lap, as I said. Zendeli's still right on our tail, but he's not quite able to go for a move, thankfully, because due to us having DRS. I don't know how well this strategy is going to work, especially because I'm just mentioning this for the first time now. Everybody else started on medium tires. Just put up the fastest lap of the race so far. Yeah, cheers. And it looks like the pit crew are out and ready to perform their magic on the car. They will be aiming to achieve the fastest pit time possible. That's generally the aim, Alex. It's generally the aim. Good start from us as Viscal takes Lungard. The team will be hoping they can get back into the action as fast as possible and not lose too much time from this stop. Again, that's generally the aim. We're going to come out in last place. Well, it's effectively last place at the moment. Um, I don't know how well this is going to work because everybody else is going to go on to soft tires at the end of the race for the second stint. And well, that's the faster compound. So they're probably going to be coming back at us. Pardon me. 
Lair in the Grand Prix. But right now, what we need to do is just qualifying lap after qualifying lap. Close that gap to the back of the pack. See if we can overcut some drivers. They're on more worn mediums. We're on brand new mediums as we head on to lap number six of the Grand Prix. Just quality lap after quality lap. Try and get ourselves up there and try and gain some position, some track position over our competition. That is the general aim that we have right now. That's the aim uh, at this present moment in time in the Grand Prix. Just gain time on the rivals because we might lose out quite badly later on with the soft tires, but it depends on how well the AI go on the soft tires. As we see, there's Aitken and uh, Joe in first and second. You see on the minimap there. And everybody else training in behind. We've already gained half a second on for sure on this lap alone. Over half a second even. We've got purple through the first sector. Someone else has got the fastest lap as well, by the way, you can see. I think it was Teo Porcher. It came up just, just as we were leaving the pit lane. Uh, but either way, this is what we need to do. We've gained a second on this lap alone on the 20th place driver, Richard, for sure, in the MP Motorsport car. This is what we need to do lap after lap. Just go, just fucking go. Just absolutely floor it, go for it. That's what we need to do. We'll see what we're like out of the second sector. It is purple again as we are, don't go wide or deep in 22 and 23. And now through 24. As again, we'll see soon what this lap runs out to. I think it's going to be a fastest lap of the race. I would imagine it'll be a fastest lap of the race. The Drogovic says the fastest lap of the race is about 1.1 seconds quicker than what we than what our best is, but we're going to smash our personal best, I think, as we've gained, uh, what, over about a second and a half on, for sure, this lap alone, absolutely insane, higher performance differences, Matt, we've got four tenths faster than what, than what Drogovic managed, or whoever that was that said that lap before, uh, but we need a couple more of those, we need a couple more of those laps, ladies and gents, that is for damn sure. If we want to try and not lose it too badly to the rest of the field here. Very good. Turn three or four or whatever that is there, by the way. I think that's turn four. I think it's turn four, but don't quote me on that. As again, we've gained another. We've gained almost a set. We've gained over a second on this first sector alone. On this first sector, we've gained over a second. We're again purple to the first sector. I didn't see the first sector split in the last lap. But that was a very, very, very good first sector. We are absolutely flying at this point in time. Could this strategy actually work better than I expected it would? It might. It very well might work out better than I had expected it would. But we're just going to have to wait and freaking see how well that works out. Um, because it could work, it could maybe not work. We'll just have to wait and see. As again, we'll see the second sector split here anytime soon as we cross into the third sector. It's a green second sector. Not purple, but green. That's still good. That's still a very good second sector. That is for damn sure. As again, we wait to see. Is this going to be another fastest lap of the race? I very much think it will be another fastest lap of the Grand Prix. No one's been into the pit lane yet. Um, so there's something. We still have one more lap to try and close up, but in the space of two laps, we've gained four seconds on the competition. Absolutely insane pace we have as we cross the line to go marginally quicker. We almost have a 44 dead on that lap. Absolutely insane pace from us, which is what we need. As I said, we just need qualifying lap after qualifying lap, but we dipped under 10 seconds behind for sure as we're on lap number eight of this Grand Prix right about now. And as we're around the final corner now, it's been another brilliant lap. Um, Oscar Piastri, our teammate, is in the pit lane. People are in the pits. Um, we're gonna see now, first of all, as we do another insane lap, there is Jack Aitken, he was the race leader. How many people have we just overcut? Holy shit, we're in net P2 at the moment. People still, P1 through 9 haven't stopped yet, but we're in net second place. This has worked out a lot better than I expected it would, but again, we just have to wait and see how people go with, you know, the soft tires, how the AI go. Um, Aitken certainly hasn't pulled a mile ahead of us. We, he has extended his gap to be over a pit, to be not over a pit stop, but to be over one second ahead of us. Joe was in second place. He's going to be miles behind us. In fact, he's going to not even be in the top 
he's not even gonna be in the top three, I don't think. No, he's not even in the top five. My God. Again, we're just have to wait and see how we, how much Boshong and Tictum gain on us. But holy fuck, this has worked out a lot better than I expected it would. We've got four laps to go after this one. We're on the last lap now, and as you can see, it's all good. It's all fine. We haven't lost out anything. In fact, we've gained time over Tictum and Boshong, who have been fighting, but we just helped, and we have. Aiken has pulled away from us quite a bit, but it's worked out brilliantly for us in the end here. Uh, well, how better, how, what better could you ask for? Honestly, what better outcome could you ask for? We started 14 on tires. I, to be honest, I'd wanted to start on the mediums, but I guess starting on the softs actually worked out way better for me than starting on the mediums would have. The game wouldn't let me start on the mediums. Uh, is why I ended up starting on the subs. It's, this has worked out so much better for us. As uh, Jack Aitken wins the Grand Prix. And we're going to come home for second place with the fastest lap. Absolutely insane. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in part four, mate. Well, Jeff, you could at least sound a little bit more excited. I'm going to be perfectly honest. We get driver of the day. I should very much, I should very much well fucking agree with that statement. Game, uh, thank you very much. Well... That may not have been the finest race in history, but there's no question, that was a critical win. Tell me, Davide, what was the key to this success? I think they kept a cool head. That's why they won today. Smooth, steady, everything bad that happened to them, they handled it calmly and professionally. That's what let them focus on getting the best out of everything else. The car, the strategy, they managed to keep out of trouble the whole way around. I'm thoroughly exhausted after the excitement of the race, but I'm sure it's nothing compared to our drivers here. They've worked hard to make it up there, and it's great to see them make their way out onto the podium. Well, there you go then, we win, we get second with the fastest lap of the race. Insane stra- I didn't expect that strategy to work out so well. It worked out better than starting on the mediums would have. Who knew? I just- I expected the AI to be a lot better on the soft tires compared to the mediums. I expected the softs to have a much better advantage over the mediums, but on- with the AI in the second in lower fuel, but apparently not. Um, but standings, you will see them right here as I'm commentating this. I don't have the standings up in my head for whatever freaking reason. But either way, that's the standings, whatever they say. I can't remember exactly what they are. I believe we have like a 42 point gap, 42 or 43 point gap heading to the final race weekend of Abu Dhabi. I'm not quite title decided yet, but the sprint race in Abu Dhabi could decide it. Um, and we still lead the Constructors' Championship as well. But Abu Dhabi next time is going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to go leave this here. So for now, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, like, share, comment, subscribe. Do all those stuff. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.